Hey folks, Joseph Sabori here, and I'm doing another movie review this week. It's a sci-fi thriller that came out on August 23, 1985, which didn't do very well at the box office, but it did gain a cult following on home video. It was on DVD by Anchor Bay from 2006, but it's been currently out of print. So I've been searching high and low just to find this rare copy. And online sites like Amazon.com is selling it for a higher price of a, over a hundred dollars and that's a shame because it had a very nice DVD with a very pristine anamorphic widescreen transfer with only a few extras of commentary and trailers it also had a high definition copy that's available online including iTunes but hopefully it does receive a future Blu-ray release by either 20th Century Fox, Anchor Bay, or any other company that Fox might have a deal with. Yeah, the film is called Warning Sign. It's a story about an accidental outbreak that's spreading around a secret military laboratory where the whole entire laboratory is being sealed shut and it's no way out. It starts spreading around until all the lab guys and gals have become something else. I know they built this story as simply more like like a horror movie, but technically it isn't. And it has an all-star cast who went on to go to do bigger and better things. Although all other actors had got their starts before this movie. And there are a lot of films that seem like an inspiration to it, mostly because uh, of all the other um, vi deadly virus movies like Outbreak, Contagion, and and even uh, 28 Days Later, you know, along with 28 Weeks Later, you know, which was a horror film in the mix of a sci-fi thriller, <clears throat> which is basically about zombies. This isn't a zombie movie of course but it's a movie where they have a warning sign that's um, the original working title of course is called biohazard and that's what the sign is a biohazard sign that's affecting so anyway the movie stars Sam Waterston who's been best known for his role in the killing fields and he went on to do uh, films like serial mom and all the others and yep even the TV show Law and Order Kathleen Quinlan who's been in other films like um, Event Horizon, Breakdown, Apollo 13 uh, she even had a film called Trap which is a TV movie yeah, she's a great actress Yafit Kato has been a lot of films including uh, Midnight Run Jeffrey DeMunn, who's now been best known for the TV series The Walking Dead, who plays Dale, but he's been in other films too. Richard Dysert, G.W. Bailey, who's been best known for playing the, the, the lieutenant in the film Police Academy. Yeah, he was playing a jerk. He was also in the film Short Circuit. Jerry Hardin and Wick Russelvich. It's written by Hal Bellward and Matthew Robbins. You know, they were the writers of Steven Spielberg films. And it's directed by, once again, Hal Bellward. The movie begins set in the secret military laboratory called Biotech, which is a pesticides manufacturer, where we meet a crew just wearing their high-tech safety gear just um, basically putting all these chemicals inside those capsules and labeling them so they'd be safe. But suddenly, one crew member who happens to be Dr. Nielsen, who's played by Richard Dicer, had just got caught by, um, by one label getting stuck inside the arm of the suit and picks up one capsule. Not knowingly, he was walking around just to see how the crew is doing while they're celebrating the company's new chemical that they just found by giving them a group photo. 
But then the capsule had fell into the room and Dr. Tom Schmidt, who was played by G.W. Bailey, was about to give them a group photo. He couldn't see their faces because, well, they had their suit on, so they decided to unzip it. And unfortunately, he accidentally stepped on the chemical, and it all, and all of a sudden, it spread the entire room, not knowingly. So they took a shower, and just to get ready, you know, he had to clean his content lenses that Tom had. But meanwhile, security guard Johnny Morris, who's played by Catherine Quinlan, is in her office and checking all the labs while people are just preparing to leave for the three-day weekend. Yeah. And while he was talking on the phone to her husband, who's a local sheriff named Kyle Morris, who's played by Sam Waterston, you know, they're just having a conversation and he just have some lunch um, that he just brought in, which is Popeye's chicken. Suddenly, a biohazard alert goes off, and that's when she discovered on all these labs that they have a biohazard, and decided to seal all the rooms shut and warning them to, to leave until the entire disease had spread. Now, they thought this warning was actually uh, a false alarm at first, but it turns out that it's actually real. So it's... So, yeah. So they had to shut down every level to be sealed up to prevent further contamination. So the whole staff is terrified about what's happening. So Joni decided to tell Kyle that there was a scientist who left the company a few months ago named Dr. Dan Fairchild, who's played by Jeffrey DeMunn, who unfortunately turns out to be a drunk and he cannot be trusted, but he might be the answer to their problems because he actually has developed a cure to actually help everybody that that got stuck inside those rooms. Once they all got suffer from the disease, it turns out that they became more unconscious and they started dying, but it turns out that they're not dead. They actually have woken alive, becoming completely violent with rage and completely homicidal maniacs. It's, I know, it's hard to believe, but it's true. So that's when, at the time that this happens, a whole crowd is, is just going around, you know, trying to get these people out of there, but no help because I know there was one guy who, who wanted to get his son out of there. The helicopter arrived with Major Connolly, who's played by Yafu Kato, who determined to keep this under control. So it turns out that since biotech is part of the Department of Defense, they thought this whole idea was might be considered to be a germ warfare division that's going around. So, of course, we all know that the whole thing is becoming indeed a nightmare. So it's up to Cal and Dan Fedchow to save Joni from being infected with the disease and save all the others before they become even worse. So that's what the film is all about and I wish this movie had the attention it deserves because it really was a well-made thriller. Um, what I love about this movie was um, the cast. I mean you got a lot of great actors too like Sam Waterston, Kathleen Quinlan, Jeffrey D. Munn, with G.W. Bailey, Yafu Kato, Richard Dicer, and <laughs> all the rest. I mean, they, they have given a great job, you know, playing their roles, so uh, definitely straight. So at least it wasn't going for this whole, you know, ridiculous plot that they had to go for and the fact that they never had any weak characters in the movie. I mean, it definitely had the horror movie element to it, even though it isn't a horror film. But they have all the crew, you know, already spreading, filled with all these uh, bubbles over their faces. Because yeah, you could tell if they're even affected or not. Yeah, and the fact that it moves too. When they become, you know, this homicidal. They started going around attacking people too. And they started destroying everything. They even try to get in the uh, the axe. I, I know they, they had other um, 
crew that did start to go completely crazy and nuts. Yeah, there's one guy with a gun. And I know all the other uh, guards out there who's wearing those uh, high-tech suits are trying to, to see if, if they're not affected. And, and trying to stop them too because I know they start shooting them if one guy is just going out of control. There is blood in the film too, but it was only there. It's not um, gory or any other like you know, most horror films are. So, but once again, it's it's not a horror movie. It's a sci-fi thriller. But it was very well made, though the way they did it. I mean, they had some great some special makeup effects on on the crew. I didn't mind the ending that they had in the film. I mean, they were going to go for a happy ending for movies like this, but if it had to be just like all these other thrillers where they just end up having a not so happy ending, then it would just be pretty much as cliche as the other. But they had to do something. Um. So there, there were there were a few flaws in it, but not as much. But I, I can accept the ending that they got. I mean, after all, nothing's perfect. I did love uh, Cal in the film too, you know, played by Sam Waterston, you know, because he's definitely a pro. <laughs> yeah, you know, just to just to get him out of there. And I, I love the chemistry between uh, him and and Doctor Dan. The, Fairchild, it, it just works, and and also the chemistry between him and and Joni. It it is interesting to see um, G. W. Bailey not playing a jerk in this movie. So at least we got to see him actually playing a nice character that sadly has been affected by the disease, and and Joni was up there just trying to help him, but he's trying to escape from all the other crews that's about to attack her, or even get caught by it. Also, um, Richard Dysart's performance <laughs> as Dr. Nielsen, I mean, when he got affected with the disease, I mean, jeez, he was like, my god, he was, I mean, the way he acted was like, <laughs> it's just, I gotta admit, he was, he was pretty funny, too. It's, it's like he really enjoys it so much than, than he was when he was a doctor. <laughs> yeah, he's just saying... I'm filled with rage! Oh man. But uh, it also has a great score, great set fam. Yeah, did a great job. The cinematography was beautiful. Done by Dean Cunley, who went on to do other films. Uh, as we already know, like Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, and all of that. Definitely has that great feel to it. Perfect location, too, for the film. They actually shot this, uh, believe it or not in La Crescenta, California. I think they pretty much shot some of the scenes of the the classroom scene. Yeah, because there is a classroom inside the laboratory. So that might have been taken from the uh, one of the schools. And the location itself was actually in Utah. So I figured that's exactly where it was all set. But maybe some of the buildings were shot in La Crescenta. So that's interesting because uh, in the credits it actually says uh, special thanks to Glendale Unified School District um, for um, participating in this movie. So that, that's cool, seeing that they shot it in La Crescenta. But it's a great film. Um, it's just a shame that this movie never got the attention it deserves. And hopefully you will finally get one again, maybe for... Um, a future Blu-ray release or so and see how it goes but definitely check this movie out it's worth it so anyway I give warning sign three and a half stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye